One of the most common questions I get is, I was having back pain. I did an MRI on my lower back. It shows a disc herniation or a broken disc, but I have no pain. I'm asymptomatic. Should I be concerned? What should I do? That's the topic of today's video. Discs degenerate with time. In asymptomatic individuals, disc bulge prevalence increases from 20% at the age of 20 to 84% at the age of 80. In the office, I usually use the example that an individual, by the time they reach 60, even though they're asymptomatic, has a 60% chance of having a disc herniation on their MRI. Degenerative conditions are conditions that occur over time. It's the wear and tear and the aging of the spine. It is a natural part of the aging process. Degenerative conditions are typically treated on the basis of symptoms. With a degenerative condition, the first question by the physician or the surgeon is going to be, how much does it hurt? Because that is going to determine what type of treatment you get. Most disc herniations will heal with conservative treatment. They'll usually respond to medications, chiropractic treatment, physical therapy, possibly even epidural injections. When should you consider surgical intervention? Number one, you must have symptoms severe enough to warrant surgery. If you don't have pain with a degenerative condition, you do not need surgery. Number two, you want to make sure you have exhausted all those conservative treatment options before you consider surgery. Number three, you must have a lesion that the surgeon can correct surgically. Just because you have back pain doesn't mean somebody can fix it with surgery. And the fourth thing, the fourth thing is Surgery for a disc herniation is done for sciatica, which is buttock and leg pain, not back pain. There are conditions that cause back pain that can be treated surgically. But in most cases, back pain from degenerative disc disease is not a surgical condition. Let's look at some MRI studies and we'll decide which ones show a surgically treatable lesion and which don't. We're gonna start out by reviewing the anatomy with a normal MRI. The lumbar spine is composed of five vertebral bodies. Each one is separated by a disc. At each disc level, there's a nerve, and all of these nerves join together in the buttock to form the sciatic nerve. If one of these nerves gets pinched by a disc being out of place, we call that sciatica. Here's the first example. In this study, we see that you have two normal discs and the bottom two discs look abnormal. They're darker than normal discs. This indicates that they've been damaged in the past and they've lost some fluid. The one that's most concerning is the bottom one at L5S1. Discs are named according to which bones they are between. So the bottom disc is between the bone five and the sacrum, so we call it L5S1. And on this axial section, you can see that there's a very large disc herniation on the left side impinging what would be the left S1 nerve. S1 symptoms go into the buttock down the leg. That's the muscle that supplies the calf. So if you have some weakness, it will be weakness in like pushing down the gas pedal or standing on your tippy toes. It can also produce numbness on the outer aspect of the foot and the bottom of the foot. This guy looks like he needs surgery. Here's another MRI study. You can see also there are some changes at the L5S1 level. Could be a problem, but when we look at the axial views, we see it is basically just a small central disc protrusion and most likely will respond to conservative treatment. Here's the third example. You can see once again changes at L5S1. It looks like a larger disc. 
When we look at the axial section, you can see that it is a much larger disc, but it's also centrally located. The symptomatic ones tend to be towards the side where they pinch the nerve as it exits the spine. Larger central discs like this many times will respond to conservative treatment. Here is the fourth example. You see there's some changes at the L4-5 vertebral level. This would be an L4-5 disc herniation. And we also see what looks like a transitional L5 vertebral body. That occurs when at the L5-S1 level, the patient fails to develop a normal disc. So there's probably no motion occurring naturally at the L5-S1 level. That places additional stress at the L4-5 level and the prognosis is poor for that disc healing and doing well. And on the axial section, we see that. In fact, it looks like some disc material is impinging the left side at the L5-S1 level. That would get the L5 nerve and the L5 nerve goes down into the buttock, down the leg, it goes to the front of the leg. The L5 nerve is the one that pulls your foot up. So if there's some damage to the L5 nerve, you might get what they call a drop foot or a slapping gait. It also gives sensation to the top of the foot. And this is the last example because I'm sure you're probably tired of this by now. If you look at this image, you can see that maybe at the bottom level, L5-S1, there may be some changes going on, but is it symptomatic? At first glance, you would think no. But as you look on the axial segments or as you go back and forth on the sagittal segments, you see that there is a large extruded disc herniation on the left side at L5-S1. Most likely, he is going to require surgery. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends and neighbors to watch. Share this video. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.